The devil was in your heart, but heaven was in your eyes. The night that you told me those little white lies. But perhaps because the man who had virtually been her guardian was gone, Ella made an unwise decision. She got married to a man called Benny Corngay, who'd been in jail on drugs charges several years earlier. It was not a good marriage, and everybody wondered how the hell would she marry somebody, a man from the street. He was a, a street hustler. Because uh, he would be taking her money and everything. And I guess they didn't allow that, because she was too valuable, so they broke that up. She got an annulment, and um, she said the judge said to the, Bernie Cornegay, you leave little girls alone, and told Ella, you just keep singing a tiska to tasca. Ella fronted Chick's band herself for a while, but then went on to collaborate with a variety of different players. She had many hits throughout the war years, including this one with the Ink Spots. Into each life some rain must fall But too much, too much is falling in my But then everything was to change. And then jazz was hit by this colossal musical revolution of the 1940s, the bebop revolution, of which the architects were, were uh, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk. Uh, and this was almost willfully an attempt to make jazz more difficult than it had been before. Ella was in the right place at the right time. And when she toured with Dizzy Gillespie's group, it was a, a golden opportunity. She was musically sophisticated enough to understand how bop worked, but she could also take advantage of a quality in Gillespie that in a way had been a little like the quality of Chick Webb too, which was that Gillespie was an inspired showman. He sugared the pill of it. Ella soaked up everything she heard and fashioned her own way of joining in. Wordless scat singing. It will become a highlight of her performances for the rest of her life. Her ability to elasticize time and be playful with it at any speed is something that she always was able to do. Adding some rhythmic design to it of spectacular nature, that's very fetching. It just seems to go on forever. But at the same time, you know, not leaving her audience behind and like, you know, throwing in something recognizable for them to like latch on to. The way she improvises, she has the knowledge of a horn player. She's like, she's like an instrument. She did it immensely. Oh, and she could go on forever and ever and ever and ever, scatting herself away with, with all the musicians on stage. She's taking a solo. She's one of the horns. It's just something that Charlie Parker might, 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 might have dreamed of. Making that transition to bebop was a key move in Ella's life. And uh, as with Chick Webb before, it was a move that was sealed both musically and emotionally by a close personal relationship, and that was with Dizzy's bass player, Ray Brown. When I was with Dizzy Gillespie's big band, uh, we went on tour with her. Maybe a year after we had been touring together, we got married. I had an influence on her in terms of uh, 
better caliber of musicians than the ones she had been employing. I was a bass player, she was a singer, you know. And she didn't tell me how to play the bass, I didn't tell her how to sing, which I think should always happen.